Oh, welcome back to Reacting to Paramount Crash Videos Part 7. I want to give you guys a huge thank you for all your support on this series. We're already at episode 7, and all these episodes always receive a lot of good feedback and support from you guys, so I want to thank you for that. As always, we're not here to laugh at people or point fingers. We're here to kind of learn lessons from other people's mistakes and not make those mistakes in the future. In this episode, we have five different crash videos to look at, and as always, we're going to start with the more simple ones, work our way up to the crazy insane ones, and at the very end, and I'm gonna save the best for last. We have a video that was submitted by a viewer and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be an exclusive look. I don't think this video is anywhere on the public internet right now. So make sure you stick around to the end to catch that one. It's a very interesting crash. With that, I welcome any of you guys to send in your video clips of paramotor crashes if you'd like them to be shared here. My email is info at tuckergot.com. Before we get into it, if you guys like what we're doing here on this channel and you'd like to support it, the best way to do it is checking out our merch down in the description. We've got limited availability of some recent limited edition designs as well as some new stock of old designs back up on the website. We've got the hats, keychains, stickers, a lot of cool stuff. So if you wanna rep this channel, show some support, check the first link down in the description. All right, so we're gonna start out with a video from Fly Crash Aviation. All the links will be in the description if you wanna check out the full videos. This is a pretty simple one, um, but it's also gnarly. So dude man's setting up to fly here at the beach. He's reverse kiting. He's got a decent bit of wind, so it should be an easy launch. But as he starts to take off, he rolls on power and... Boom! Paramotor turned yard sail, and there's shrapnel just raining down from the sky. This one was pretty gnarly because I don't think I've seen a paramotor explode that crazy. It looked like there was not much left of his motor after that. Fortunately, he looks okay. I don't think he got injured. Um, and luckily, none of the bystanders got injured by shrapnel. Now let's talk about what happened in this particular clip. So on launch, there's a couple things we're looking for. We want power, posture, pressure, and don't sit. And all four of those things, he kind of failed upon. So power, he started out by not giving it quite enough power. He was kind of early in his run up as he kind of lifted off the ground. His posture was not great. As you see, he's kind of leaned over. You can see the thrust angle of his motor. You want to be leaning back, getting your posture upright so that that motor is pushing you straight forward. Pressure, once you get your speed, you want to apply brake pressure to increase lift and take off smoothly. You can see the trailing edge of his glider is really not deformed at all. So he's just hands up. He's not really applying any pressure for launch. And number four, don't sit. That was one of the biggest things here that he did. He just kind of was running and lifted his feet into a sitting position. And with the other three elements not in place, he wasn't ready to take off and he just came back down in a sitting position. Hopefully the repair bill wasn't that bad. All right, let's move on to video number two. This one is also from Fly Crash Aviation. This one, dude man is at a beach again, reverse launch. Now he's turned around, he's running. He looks pretty good. He's got the power, he's got the posture, he's got the pressure. He didn't sit, he's off the ground, but then tragedy strikes. His wing falls behind him and he crashes down into the ocean. Evaluating his launch a little bit more, he had the power, his posture looked pretty good, he added pressure on his brakes, but that's kind of where he went a little bit overboard. You see, from the time he leaves the ground, to the time the wing stalls, he continues adding more brake pressure. And you can just see him getting really slow, and then his wing just stalls and falls right behind him. Now, you can tell this wing is probably pretty old. I don't know what the model is, but I would assume it's a pretty old wing. Likely, if he was on a modern wing, uh, a modern beginner wing at least, it would be much more forgiving, and this probably wouldn't have happened given the same inputs. But for this particular wing, he was obviously pulling too much brake and that led to the stall situation. Now this next clip is gnarly. It comes from Ian McConnell. Thank you, Ian, for sharing this clip. Ian is kind of lucky to be alive, in my opinion. If this clip doesn't convince you not to ground start your paramotor, I don't know what will. So Ian's just conveniently got his GoPro laying out, filming himself, and he decides to go pull start his motor. He puts his throttle on, grabs the pull start, yank, yank, and 
Oh my God, he almost lost his jugular. So for whatever reason, whether it was a mechanical failure or maybe his trigger was just depressed in his hand somehow, his engine went to full power. And this is exactly why ground starting is never really encouraged. It's, in my opinion, one of the most dangerous parts of this sport, not even flying, but just starting your motor up. Particularly on the ground, it seems like a lot of injuries throughout the year happen because of this. People with messed up hands, arms, faces, it can get really bad if your body comes in contact with that propeller. I think this is kind of a perfect example because a lot of people that ground start kind of justify it by saying, well, if it goes to full power, I'll just hold on to it, I'll overpower it, or I'll hit the kill switch real fast. I'm sure Ian was prepared mentally for that to happen, but at some point, I feel like when a motor of that caliper looks like a Moster 185, spools up to full power, it's gonna catch you off guard and it's gonna overpower you. And he did a really good job of getting out of the way, but you saw how close that propeller came to his neck, which is not a good situation. Luckily, he says he wasn't injured, but this is a very good reminder to not ground start your paramotor. On your back or on a rack is the phrase a lot of people use. All right, let's move on to clip number four. This comes from, I don't know how to say it, Portal Plock but it's just a clip of a paramotor flying along. It looks like he's having a good time, maybe coming in for a landing and boom. Surprise power lines, huge explosion of sparks. It almost looked like his lines were severed. I'm not sure if they were or not, but dang. We've talked about this in previous reacting to crash videos videos and power lines are definitely a hazard to us. Especially when you're flying in an area that you're unfamiliar with, you always want to stay high, scope it out, make sure that you know there's no power lines because they can be really tricky. They can be super hard to see and you might find yourself in a situation where you see them but you don't have enough time to even react before you come in contact with them. Luckily, when I ran the description through Google Translate, it says the 47-year-old paraglider hit the high voltage line. Nothing happened to the man. So thankfully, apparently he was uninjured, which is really good. That could have gone much worse, but a good reminder to be careful when it comes to power lines. So this final clip comes from Jim White, who is a viewer who emailed me this footage with a really good description of everything that happened. I'll talk about some of that towards the end, but let's look at the clip first. So I guess Dude Man's somewhere down in Florida, and you can see he's flying over some sort of industrial lot. Now, from the beginning, he looks like he's got a little altitude, some space to work with maybe, but if he had a motor out looking at it right now, he would be pretty tight for options. As the video progresses, you can see he starts getting lower and his options for a safe landing are quickly diminishing. There's a lot of hazards below. There's buildings, trees, I'm sure there's power lines. There's vehicles and moving vehicles and lots of people. Before anything has even happened, this footage is making me really, really nervous just because I know he has nowhere to put it down safely for the majority of this video, he's definitely accepting a really high level of risk. And sure enough, worst possible scenario, engine dies. No, but ah. oh, need to help. Ah. we'll help you hang on. Woo! Oh. You need to be you need to one called? No, I'm good. Okay. Woo! I got it, I got it. There we go. Luckily, there's a bunch of individuals right nearby that come to his assistance within seconds. He's surrounded by friendly people trying to help him. 
So there's two main takeaways from this video, but first I wanna read to you guys kind of some of the things uh, that Jim said. So he said, this is a good one for your craft series. Three months ago, I was flying too low in my industrial park first thing on Monday morning when my Nitro 200 shut off. It knocked the wind out of me for a good 30 seconds, the worst I can ever remember. I did break my hip, but I flew this past weekend for the first time with much more respect for things that could go wrong and 25 pounds lighter. He said, there have been many silver linings from this accident. I always learn things the hard way. So I responded back and thanked him for sharing his footage and uh, having a willingness to share it to help other people. And I asked him if he knew what happened with the engine. Initially, Jim said he wasn't too sure what happened, but he suspected that his spark plug cap may have come off. The problem was a lot of people had their hands on the motor before he got back to it. It could have fallen off on the impact. He didn't really know. But then after flying some more, it happened again. Spark plug cap came right off and he realized that that was exactly the issue that happened. I know that the Nitro 200 is sort of notorious for having that issue. A lot of people change their spark, pu spark plug caps to aftermarket ones because they don't lock on very tight and they will pop off. But aside from what mechanically may have happened, decision making was not the best in this situation. Obviously flying over that industrial park with no good options to land really was introducing a lot of unnecessary risk. We always wanna have a landing option available because we know these are two stroke engines. They're pretty reliable, but they do have a tendency to shut off every so often. So you always kinda of wanna have a good landing site available to you. Along with that, an FR-103 were also not allowed to fly over people. And that was one thing that this, I feel like kinda of hits a gray area. It's all up to the FAA's interpretation of a populated area in the end or a congested area. In my assessment, I wouldn't have put myself in this situation and I wouldn't encourage anyone else to be flying over an area with this many people. So not just the lack of landing areas, but the amount of people down below, I think were two main takeaways from this video clip. Jim has definitely learned, unfortunately, the hard way. Um, he's recovered though, and he's back up into the air, so good for him, and I thank him for sharing this clip. That's all I've got for you guys. That was all the five clips. My camera's telling me it's about to overheat because we're filming in crispy 4K. Like I said in the beginning, if you want to support this channel, check out the link down below for any of these sweet merch items. All the limited edition stuff is in very low quantities as of right now, and they will not get reprinted. So if you like the blueprint or the caution, particularly, make sure you grab them before they're gone forever. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like down below. I appreciate all your support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace.